Limbo is an uncertain period of time, or a state of uncertainty or non-resolution where a person is awaiting an important decision, action, or resolution. It is an intermediate state or condition. When you are in a state of limbo, you will feel stuck as if there is absolutely no progression. And one of the hallmark experiences that comes with limbo is the feeling of being powerless. Because limbo is such an inherently negative state to experience, it is easy to assume at face value that everyone doesn't like limbo. But actually, some people do. Some people feel safer in a state of limbo, and some people use limbo as a passive-aggressive way of gaining power. There are some reasons why a person might have a positive kickback or payoff as a result of creating or maintaining a state of limbo. Let's look at those reasons now. 1. People who are terrified of losing control and of losing options love limbo. They love the personal freedom inherent in limbo. To decide often implies cutting off options. To commit makes them feel trapped. They fear the feeling of being trapped in a decision that they might regret. No matter how much it tortures the people around them, a state of limbo, where everything is up in the air, creates a sense of personal freedom for them. 2. People who feel like they're trapped in a lose-lose scenario often use limbo as a strategy of avoidance. For example, you find yourself in a situation where deciding either way or taking an action either way both leads to negative consequences that the person themselves feels like they can't or don't want to face. And so limbo is a way of postponing <laughs> or avoiding that situation altogether. When this is the case, a state of limbo creates a sense of personal safety for them. At the very least, it postpones consequences and postpones pain. Therefore, limbo can serve as a temporary sanctuary where one can hide away from the risks one might be making or taking if they say something, do something, or decide something. Three. Limbo can be a way of passive-aggressively gaining power over other people. Let's say you're in a situation and you see that the progress of some situation depends entirely on you. That's a pretty powerful position to be in. For example, if you're using limbo as a way to gain shadow power, resolve, or certainty, or progress depends on you providing information, or on you doing something, or on you making a decision, or on you initiating or creating resolution. This means the other person is at your mercy. You're the one in control with the ball in your court, and this is where you want to keep it. So you intentionally stay passive. Limbo then becomes a hook, keeping other people powerless and trapped, and waiting and stuck with you in the power position. This dynamic can become super abusive. 4. People who like to avoid responsibility because they have resistance to responsibility in the first place, especially those people who don't want to take any responsibility when taking responsibility would make them seem like the bad guy tend to use limbo as a way of avoiding that responsibility and avoiding being the bad guy in a situation they find themselves in. At some level, every person knows that if they don't make a decision, the decision will be made for them. And when you are using limbo as a power strategy, this is exactly what you want. You want the other person to make the decision for you or take that action. Why? Because then they're the one to blame for it. Then they're the one responsible for any fallout from it. The idea behind this one is that if they don't make a decision or if they won't do something, the pressure will build up and build up until the other person decides something or does something. By being committed to limbo, that pressure to take responsibility and make a decision or do something is on the other party. It can be the other person's fault. The other person could be the one to blame for whatever is decided or done to create forward movement. They can see themselves and be seen as the victim, and the other party will have to see themselves and be seen as the bad guy in the situation regardless of whether this is actually the case or not. Using limbo as a means of gaining shadow power is a very dirty chess game with serious implications in a universe that is based on the law of attraction, what I like to call the law of mirroring, and also managed by the law of cause and effect. Whether conscious or subconscious, it enhances weakness of character. As a result, it's not good for you or for anyone around you. In order to let go of the strategy, First and foremost, you are going to have to tap into your bravery. Limbo is the result of your unwillingness to face, feel, and deal with something in your life. It is about fear and avoidance. Bravery is the antidote. 
and bravery is like a muscle you need to learn to exercise. Admit that you are afraid, and admit to what you are afraid of. Bravery does not imply the lack of fear. It implies that you are very conscious of the fact that you're afraid, and yet you are moving forward and deciding something, or taking an action, or doing something with that fear. Bring your fear out into the open and into plain view by looking at it, examining it, writing about it, talking about it, finding out whatever it will take to resolve that fear. You need to validate your fear instead of judge yourself as wrong for having that fear in the first place. If you judge your fear, nothing's going to come out of that except for more fear. (laughs) This means there's a really valid reason why you're feeling the way you're feeling, regardless of whether or not you're actually perceiving accurate consequences that might come as a result of something you might decide or say or do. It's valid for you to feel that fear because you're perceiving those consequences to exist. The next thing you need to do is to get very, very clear. When you are using limbo as a subconscious power strategy, or even a conscious one, then you will actually use confusion as a way of disguising the fact that you're using limbo as a power strategy. A better way of saying this is you are going to use confusion as a way of disguising your unwillingness to face and deal with whatever situation in your life you feel like you can't deal with and can't face. If you're stuck in limbo, you will keep trying to distract, postpone, defend, analyze, rationalize, and explain the situation. You do this so you can expend energy without having to make a decision or take an action. Essentially, whether you realize it or not, you're actively spinning your wheels so as to avoid moving forward. So the question you need to ask yourself is, how are you confusing yourself? And how does doing so benefit you? Be brave enough to see the personal payoffs that staying stuck in limbo and keeping other people in limbo is giving to you. From there, you need to make a conscious choice. Either consciously choose to stay in limbo, knowing very powerfully the reason why you're doing it and also the consequences for doing so, or get the hell out of it. From there, face and examine and identify how to approach and resolve the fear you have in your situation, and then face, examine, and identify how to approach and resolve the problem that you're afraid about in and of itself. Whatever you do, do not ignore, do not deny, do not run away from the problem that you are facing. Serious rule of thumb there. Don't go into avoidance mode. Also, don't postpone the problem. You'll find that a lot of people who are stuck in limbo, who become aware of the limbo that they're stuck in, tend to slip into this place of being like, okay, I just need to figure myself out or to resolve the fear before I move forward. And actually, that just is one more excuse to stay in limbo and keep other people stuck there. Get in the habit of playing things out. If you are using this subconscious or conscious strategy of limbo as a power strategy, then most likely you're playing a short-term game. You're not playing out what the consequences of staying in limbo will be. This means you need to become aware of long-term repercussions, not just short-term repercussions. So the first thing that you need to become aware of is the long-term repercussions of staying in limbo. Literally close your eyes and just watch what happens in a month, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months, a year, two years, five years, ten years. Play it out as far as you can. Then do the same thing with any decision or action you might take in the scenario that you're in. What you will notice is the outcome will inevitably be either the same or, what's more likely, much worse if you stay in limbo than if you take an action. Because limbo is really about the fear of commitment and the fear of consequences and the fear of making a decision and the fear of being seen as the bad guy, I have a collection of videos that you would benefit by watching. The first is indecision, decisions and indecisiveness. The second is why you should consciously choose your consequences. The third is how to get over the fear of commitment. The fourth is self-concept, the enemy of awakening. And the fifth is how to get over the fear of responsibility. When you are creating or maintaining a state of limbo, you must know that life will not stop and stay stuck for you forever. Your life will be decided for you. That means you're going to be powerless to whatever happens. And so, you need to ask yourself the following question. 
Do I care so much about feeling like the good guy, or about not having to take responsibility for something going badly, or about having the upper hand, or about avoiding unwanted things, that I am willing to let my life happen to me? You cannot thrive in your life if you stay passive. You cannot thrive in your life if you decide to stay at the effect of your life. The life satisfaction you seek only belongs to people who are willing to be at the cause instead of at the effect of their life. So exercise your bravery and be proactive. So face what you need to face, make the decision that you need to make, take the action that you need to take, and resolve what needs to be resolved. Have a good week. If you liked this video, be sure to share it, like it, and also subscribe to my channel so you can see more content like this. But I want to personally thank you for taking the initiative and having the bravery to step into the space of awareness, not only for yourself, but for the benefit of those around you.